today we are looking at the refined storage mod specifically we're going to be looking up how to set up a storage system make it completely wireless complete control over your own auto crafting if you want or require any help with this stuff you can always join the discord link will be in the description below we have people dedicated to help you with this kind of stuff let us know down there and let's get into the video so the whole thing starts with this the controller Think of this as the beating heart of the network. This is essentially your main piece, your motherboard to the whole network. Does nothing by itself, but everything needs this to work. Once you power it up, it will look a little something like this. Using cables will extend your controller's effective range, but you can link machines directly next to it. Placing blocks right on top or next to the controller will work as well. So the first two things you need to make this network into something usable will be a grid of some kind and a disk drive with at least a 1k disk inside. Now a link like this will directly work because it is stacked above each other. This will work with the controller. You do not need to run cables to these three things here if you're going to run it like this. Now a good way to check if something is linked or powered, it will light up. The one thing to link is a grid. Essentially, this is just a fancy chest, but we want something better than that. We want the crafting grid. The crafting grid gives you ability to craft whilst inside the grid. So it's not just a chest. It allows you to craft in there as well. It's like you've shoved a crafting table inside it. Now, a crafting grid is great, but something this is really good for is auto crafting. These puppies here. These are five tiers of crafters. And again, with no power, there's no lights. But with power, they will look like this. Tier one will start with nine slots to craft with. You can craft up to nine things. And all the way up to tier five, where you get 81 slots of things to craft. This is pretty good. This face of the crafter is the direction it is pointing this is going to become quite important in a little bit another machine we're going to need for this is the pattern grid this guy has a similar interface to the crafting grid but there are some noticeable differences such as processing extract you've got the down arrow there as well so to water craft anything we're going to need to make a pattern for it in the network once that pattern's in the network as long as we have those items it will automatically craft it but one of the first auto things we're going to craft is patterns it makes sense to auto craft patterns so that you're never stuck on patterns when you need it make your first pattern and then take that pattern and add it to the top right as shown here while we're still in the pattern grids gui we're going to head over to the jei and look up the recipe for the pattern click that little plus button that moves items to the crafting system and it will transfer the items to this here in this case we're going to uncheck exact this would allow the network to use any glass for this craft and then hit the down arrow under the pattern. Essentially exact means that you're going to use those exact things. So if I have brown glass on me right now, but then later on I have regular glass. If I use exact, it won't allow me to use the regular glass. That's why we've unchecked this here. This is going to encode the pattern, changing its tooltip shown to what it makes. So although this is a pattern, this pattern is for making patterns now this can be a little confusing i understand but it it will make sense once you understand this process it will make sense i promise put that encoding pattern into your crafter and so long as you have the materials you can craft up a bunch of patterns so inside the pattern grid i will typically have it filtered to show only craftables which makes it easier to request things later regardless of that you should see the ability to craft patterns now when you click on that craft icon it will give you this screen here asking you how many you want now you cannot craft 64 if you want you can uncraft 64 if you want or if you want to go crazy you can type in 97 billion and you will craft it if you have the materials now if you are missing any materials that it will show you it will highlight red saying that you're missing x amount of materials to be able to craft it if you have all the materials it will say starts and it will then start crafting the required amount now you have patterns so now whenever you're wanting to make patterns so that you can auto craft things, for example, if you want to turn redstone into redstone blocks, I know this is a silly thing, but you're going to need patterns to be able to do that. So being able to automatically craft the patterns will allow you to then use that pattern to turn it into redstone, turn redstone into redstone blocks, and then you can automatically craft the redstone blocks because you have the patterns for it. But we want more automation, right? We want like basically just to not touch this thing. 
So if you point your crafter into a furnace, like so, and this could be any crafter, I'm using the tier 5 in this 5.0, but you can put it into a furnace that kind of looks like a pumpkin. What it will do is it will take on that machine's name in its GUI. This is what I mean right here. So all the modium furnace. Obviously, if you use a different furnace, it will say something else. But essentially, that crafter will have a different name because it's pumping into something different. But what it will do is it allows you to use uh, that machine as part of its crafting. So obviously putting it into a furnace, I can now use that furnace as part of the crafting process. You will need to set it up so that it will accept from the crafter and you want it to look like this and you'll also have to power it as well. So make sure there's power going into there. So when you encode a pattern that involves a machine processing the input, for example, iron ore into iron ingots, it's going to automatically select the processing box. We're going to put this pattern into the crafter attached to the furnace. So obviously, if you want multiple of these crafters set up, make sure that this one will go into the one that has the crafter attached to the furnace. Then you should see on your crafting grid this. So these are the things you can craft. We have the we have the patterns and we have the iron ingots. Now, it's obviously not going to show the iron ores because this is the end product. This is what we can craft, not 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 what we need to use it. It's only when we click into it, it will show us what we need to craft it. Now, if we look at our crafting monitor, this is going to let us see what's going on with our crafts in a more detailed way. So it's basically going to say if the system has done the thing. So we'll see like this in the crafting monitor. What this says here is it's done the thing that we've asked it to do, but it hasn't got the requested items back into the system. This is going to require another way of interacting with a non icebox called the importer. There's a couple of tiers of these as well, as you can see. Uh, they're slightly different colored, but they have the same shapes. They also inside them have filter and upgrade slots. So if we slap one of these on the back of the machine that it's coming from, i.e. the furnace, because that's what's cooking the iron, and make sure it's attaching via cables back to the system, and also make sure the machine is configured to push in that direction, you should then start getting your iron ingots. So one little thing here that you can do, the crafter's speed is tied to the number of storage slots in the block it's facing. This does make a lot of difference when you're crafting like one stack of items, but if you're literally smelting thousands of things, you're going to notice that speed and you're going to be sat there waiting for things. For a little bit of speed boost, I add a large storage buffer in between the machine and the crafter. And this will help with the speeds and the processing of all the things. So next, we're going to look at some mechanism machines. We're going to be looking into exporters. They look a lot like the importers and you will probably get them confused. I know I did. But for example, this process is to make steel. So we get a metallurgic infuser. We're going to need two patterns in the crafter that are pointed towards it. So you will need one pattern for each of the processes going on here. So make the patterns like so, just put them in and then actually make the pattern. Metallurgic infuser needs coal to work. And here's how we're going to do this. We're literally going to use the exporter on the side of the infuser and we're going to filter it for coal. And we're going to click on the exporter and then filter it for coal. So essentially you just drag the coal in there. If you have a farm for coal essence that's not being crafted into coal before it gets into your ice network, we can do something about that. So make the pattern for coal essence into coal, then put it into one of your crafters, probably not the same one I plugged into the infuser, then get the crafting upgrade for the exporter, which will allow you to craft the coal from the coal essence as needed for the infuser. So this will, this will do it as and when you need it, and it will allow you to do it there. So you need the pattern first, and then the crafting upgrade so that it will craft it as it's going into the exporter. What's really cool about this is it will fill up to 64 and only keep it there. It only fills up as much as that storage can take. So it will fill up to 64 and then won't craft anymore. And then as soon as you use one, it will then pop it back up to 64. So this is how we're going to configure our infuser right now. So from there, we can hook up an importer on the other side. Just make sure the machine is configured to request our steel dust as well. Probably suggest don't use a barrel with this machine because mechanism machines are a little bit finicky about what they can pull from. But of course, having a separate infuser going in from enriched iron to steel would speed up the process. But this does work. As you can see, we're getting both the things pretty good. So you can actually chain these crafts together as well. One crafter making an iron from the essence 
then the infuser turning it into steel dust then the furnace turn it into ingots then the final craft chain into steel casings so you can literally go from essence all the way up into casings it's really cool the amount of automation you can get just from this stuff here but that in itself is going to take up a lot of space just physically and also the 1k storage disc but don't worry we've got this covered with the external storage interface this isn't technically part of the network but it will work this is the GUI. It's pretty similar to the importer and the exporter. So if you click on priority, setting this higher will make the network more likely to push items into non storage if able. So this will essentially give you access to items without filling up your disks. And in the storage, it will tell you how full it is. So at this point, we'll have rabbit hole crafting taken care of, importing and exporting and storing and retrieving items from outside of the network. We're going to look into some wireless access stuff, but quickly before, just know that everything we add is also going to add to the power consumption. So depending on the tier of the thing, how many things we have, you might end up pulling more RF depending on how much stuff you have. Obviously, the more things you have, the higher the tier, the more RF you're going to be pulling. So far with everything that we've got here, we're using around 347 RF a tick already. For wireless access, you're going to need a wireless transmitter and a wireless grid of some kind. If you shift right click the transmitter with the wireless crafting grid, you will link them. Essentially, after you've done that, you're going to have access to your stuff on the go. So you'll be able to access your crafting grid, your auto crafting setup. It's actually pretty good. This transmitter itself can be upgraded so that you can access your stuff from further away. So you can give more range with the upgrades uh, on the right side there. And you can go all the way up to 48 blocks with the more upgrades. Eventually, you can trade all those cards in for an infinity range booster, which as the name suggests, you're going to be able to open it everywhere. There's still one more upgrade, which is the dimension card upgrade. Essentially, this will allow you to go in between dimensions, overworld, nether, mining, whatever it is. You'll be able to then access this everywhere. The infinity works on that world and that world only. Dimension, obviously, across dimensions. One thing to note that these upgrades are huge for power consumption and things like that. So be wary of that. If the infinity range card does not work properly when using the advanced wireless transmitter, use a normal wireless transmitter and it should be okay. But now that you're going to have this now that you're going to have this stuff everywhere, this thing on screen is the is a network transmitter. It pairs with a receiver through the use of a network card. The transmitter will go with the main system. Receiver goes with the remote location, even other dimensions. For this example, we're staying in the mining dimension. So essentially, there will be no cables between the two locations to link the network card. To link the network card, just simply right click the receiver with it. And the tooltip shown should update the location of the receiver once that's done put it straight back into the transmitter back at your main network and immediately you're going to have access at the new location and that's pretty much it that is how you get into a refined storage that's how you set up a little bit of auto crafting and that's how you wirelessly access the system as well if you have any other questions on this or you want any other specific tutorials let us know and again you can access all of this in the discords and and you can ask for help if you need it guys i want to say thank you for watching i hope you have a great rest of the day i'll see you soon take it easy stay safe you can check out all of my other videos on this channel here and i'll see you soon Bye bye